I wrote some words on wisdom, which I'll read to you. Wisdom is truth and love. Wisdom is thought to be the ability to distinguish right from wrong. Yet it is perhaps better understood as the ability to discern importance. We have the unerring, uncanny sense of right and wrong, either as a body state or a flash of certainty of mind, neither of which are denied to the foolish. Yet it takes a blend of qualities to know how to assess the importance of anything. We need knowledge that comes from experience, faith in the certainty of a new dawn, a master's indifference at any crossroads, and the power to shape feelings into words. It can be described as truth and love, blended in harmony and beauty. Clarity and strength are also present. If we aspire to become wise, then we have a particular life path, motivated by an enthusiasm for knowledge and sincerity and a willingness to share. We become poles to a circle of those who idealize the qualities we are seeking to embody through a learning by teaching attitude to life. This circle is a yin force, a cauldron of sorts. Thus a way has been found to bring form to ideas arising. We have to practice wisdom as a life power. So the idea that wisdom gives you a sense of relative importance of things something might go against your preferences or even your principles but really it's trivial it makes no difference other things which appear quite harmless nevertheless give a real clue as to something that's hidden perhaps and will create an effect in the world which is just unhelpful not wanted to be avoided and in, in many of the Sufi stories, the Sufi teaching stories go into bizarre scenarios to get a point across. And in many of them, the, the Sufi teacher is, is, is pointing to something that everyone else misses and just says, look, that is the important thing in this situation. You're all focusing on that, but that's the important thing. And I think we have to think about that really deeply now. Um, for example, I was reading a book written in the 18th century, Hawkeye and the Last of the Mohicans, Fenimore Cooper, in which he was calling attention to the dangers of climate change in 1780. He was pointing out that the settlers, even in the eastern side of America, were behaving in a way which was unsustainable in the long term. He was a backwoodsman. He would never take anything without replacing it, never take more than he needed. And he saw these settlers coming who did that. Back in 1780, he wrote that. Um, he could see the relative importance of someone just cutting down a, a clearing of trees when there were a million trees, other trees. He could see that cutting down those trees was nevertheless an important error. And clearly, we've been missing all of the important things for years and centuries as a species. And now we have to just notice who to listen to, who's wise enough to actually know what's important and what's not. We have to find out who to follow. Now, I've said we need to practice wisdom as a life path. Well, how do we do that? So I've go on to say this how it all works the rhythm of life is how we perceive the wave that we are part of a waveform like any other a sound a beam of light having seven rainbow colors when seen through prisms of ego and self-identification life itself is a field of energy everywhere and forever underlying all form and allowing all action any action sends a ripple into the oceanic life field and until entropy has robbed its energy it impresses itself here and there 
causing effects and outcomes indefinitely. A thought is an action and impacts upon all and everything. A passionately held, specifically focused thought form writes large upon the tapestry of events. We guard the mind from absorbing negative habits and from projecting pessimistic attitudes. We are optimists as an article of faith. Then we use the mind to see only opportunity and speak only wisdom and beauty. We gravitate towards the energetic pull of the moment and are enthusiastic about a way of living which becomes our defining quality. We spin our lives according to this feature and we are able to become central and influential according to how well we speak the language of our group. So let's unpick some of this. A thought is an action and impacts upon all and everything. Many of us have read this in books and perhaps some of us has, have started to understand what that means. The bottom line is that you, you mustn't think anything that you don't want to have happen. And you listen to what people say when they speak ordinarily. Always moaning, always complaining, always pessimistic. I'm describing more than half of the world, which is why we've got the world that we've got. If more than half of the world were optimistic, we might well have a different result. Now, we don't have to wait for half of the world to get optimistic. We understand that if we practice the wisdom of optimism and, and faith all the time, all the time, and only meet and spend our lives with other people who are doing the same thing, and we tell people what we're doing, we, we kind of teach this, we spread the message. Yeah, well, that's enough, because then we'll create a path through all the shit that's coming. We don't have to have the darkness that everybody else is choosing. That's not a requirement. Just because other people are suffering, sadly, we might feel compassion for them, but we don't have to identify with them. We We have to understand that Whatever we decide in our lives is, is what we'll have, and we must decide optimistically. So we learn to control the mind. And we understand that this is the important thing. Right and wrong and so on and so forth. Okay, But the important thing to do in every single moment is to notice the light in that moment. Always focus on the light. Don't give energy. Don't get dramatic about the negativity of your life. That's the biggest challenge that I've got is telling my clients to stop being so negative. Even in their conversations with me, they insist that their problems are far worse than anyone else's have ever been. And it, it's not the case, is it? And it doesn't matter anyway. The only resolution of these issues is optimism. Now, a thought is an action and impacts upon all and everything. And a passionately held, specifically focused thought form writes large upon the tapestry of events. We do need to take this very seriously. What gives um, a being of the astral plane legitimacy, shall we call it, power, effect, influence, are these two qualities, passion and specific focus. And, and the astral plane is what we're talking about here. We, we're creating a thought form. It's not physical, but it is real on the astral plane. That non-physical realm is where we go when we internalize our thoughts and, and we have dreams in our sleep time and, and so on. And it continues to exist, even though we move around and can't see the continuity. It con does have continuity. And what gives it its maximum force is this combination of specific focus and clarity and, and passion. So if you are very, very passionately focused on a terrible outcome in life, that will be an attractive force that will bring that kind of event into your life, the energy of that event, if not the specific details of what you've imagined. And contrarily, if you passionately know that your faith is valid and you affirm what you want to have happen, what you desire, then that is going to attract that event. Everything that you do, 
else, everything else, is secondary to this. The primary thing, the only article of wisdom that you need is to know what I've just explained. Think clearly about some positive outcome and put that thought form and no other thought form into the astral plane. That's wisdom. If you don't do that, then you're not practicing wisdom. You might have an idea, a, a thought about the nature of reality. You might know all the scriptures and all the practices. But if you don't do that, you've wasted your time. Even if you don't understand any of this philosophy, but you do do that, then you're fine. That's, that's wisdom. And wisdom is not really correlated to intelligence or cleverness or assimilation of knowledge even. That's, that's not it. Wisdom is knowing what's important. And there is only one thing that's important. And that's faith or optimism or self-confidence. Seeing that the glass is half full. It's that simple.